Although we've never had any problems with theft or damage, we do like the reassurance that having CCTV as part of our van build gives us. So in this video we're going to talk about CCTV systems and what they can do for you. So keep watching. Don't forget to check out our other videos on everything campervan and motorhome related, from solar to water, heating to gadgets, tyres to trips. If you like this video please do hit the thumbs up, it really does help me to know what you like, and you can ask any questions or give feedback in the comments. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos, please hit the subscribe button and clicking the bell will give you a notification when a new video goes live. Finally, if you do decide to hit the thumbs down, it would be great if you could also leave a comment so I'd know what you didn't like. As with any of our security measures, for obvious reasons I'm not going to go into detail of our systems. However, it's safe to say that as part of our van build we have a number of CCTV cameras, both visible and hidden. Whilst not an essential, there are a few reasons we like to have a selection of CCTV cameras. When driving, we have a record of any traffic incidents and it gives us all round visibility for manoeuvring. When we're wild camping, either rurally or in urban areas, it's nice to be able to keep a discreet eye on the outside of the van from inside. When we're leaving the van parked up, it's nice to be able to check in on it and get alerts if movement is detected inside or out. Although we rarely leave our dog alone in the van, when we do, our cameras help us to keep an eye on her and the environmental conditions to check she is okay. And finally, we sometimes lift footage from the cameras for our trip videos. The simplest of closed circuit television or CCTV is a camera connected directly to a screen, enabling you to view what is happening somewhere else. One of the main uses of this type of setup is a reversing or rear view camera. Some monitors allow this to be expanded to have more cameras in different locations that can all be viewed together. A further expansion to this is to add a digital video recorder or DVR, which enables you to record the footage. Often these also have the ability to be connected to an existing internet facing router to send the footage to the cloud for remote viewing or backup. Internet protocol or IP cameras are an alternative. These could be connected to a separate DVR by wire or wireless or may have built in functionality to connect by Wi-Fi to your existing internet connection. Again, allowing remote viewing, cloud storage of footage and notifications by email or message. Many also are able to have an SD storage card installed to record footage locally on the camera. You can also usually add multiple cameras from the same manufacturer to the same app or have different manufacturers cameras on the same network but you may need to use different apps to access them. We have three key types of IP camera that I would recommend for van use. 12 volt cameras which can be powered from your leisure battery and are usually available in indoor or outdoor versions. USB cameras which if you have USB sockets are powered from them. In our experience these tend to be indoor only. Both of these require a permanent power connection. Reasonably new to the market are totally wire free rechargeable cameras which give the most flexible options. The ones we have used varied between three weeks to two months between charges, depending on how often they're triggered or viewed. Some have the option to add solar panels and most can be used in or outdoors. Different cameras have different features which suit different applications, so it's worth looking for ones that meet your needs. For example, one of our cameras has temperature and humidity sensors, which is great when we are monitoring the environment for our dog. If you're not looking to make use of a cloud storage plan, being able to email snapshots or video clips when motion is detected is a simple way to have footage recorded off-site as footage stored on a camera in a van that's been stolen isn't much use. Most cameras come with motion detection triggers to send an alert by email or message, but these can be prone to false triggers for moving vehicles, trees or animals. Some cameras offer artificial intelligence powered notifications allowing you to set them to only tell you if they see a person rather than other movement. If you also want to be alerted about other inputs like temperature or noise, great if you have a dog for example, some cameras can also do this. 
Finally, for ease of use, being able to see multiple cameras within the same app is useful. This often means getting cameras from the same manufacturer, but you can also look at cameras that use the OnVIF protocol that will allow connections to be made with other third-party apps. If you're not connecting up to the internet and using wired cameras, it's as simple as wiring up power and plugging them into a screen. With wireless IP cameras, you'd need to connect the power or charge them up and then connect them to your Wi-Fi. Whilst cameras differ in their setup process, the principle of connecting them is usually very similar. Essentially, you need to be able to share the network ID and password of your in-van Wi-Fi with the camera. This could be done by connecting a laptop to the camera by cable or using the camera's app to share the information using the camera's own temporary Wi-Fi connection by playing a data burst sound or showing a QR code. I'll quickly run through setting up this RioLink camera to connect to our Wi-Fi in the van, just to show how simple it can be. After opening the RioLink app and telling it we want to add a new camera, it asks us to identify it by using the QR code mounted on the camera. As it's not been installed before, we need to configure the Wi-Fi, so the app needs to know the camera is ready for pairing. We enter the name and password for the Wi-Fi connection in the van and the app generates a QR code with this information in it. It's then just a case of showing the QR code to the camera. Scan succeeded. Camera is connecting to your router. Please wait. Connection to the router succeeded. Welcome to RioLink. To protect access to the camera, it asks us to create a device password and name the camera. As you can see, that was pretty easy and painless. Here are a couple of points of note if you are considering fitting CCTV. Although the UK law does prohibit display screens where a driver can see them, there is an exemption to allow them where they are assisting the driver to see the road adjacent to the vehicle. So as long as your installation fulfills this, you should be legal. Privacy should be a consideration, especially if you stay on campsites. Be sensible, don't be recording other people's pictures. In fact, on a campsite, you may want to consider switching off external cameras altogether. Two-way audio and an alarm, which you can trigger remotely, are included in some cameras and are a nice feature to have as it gives you the opportunity to warn someone even if you're not nearby. However, when it comes to privacy, audio recording is actually more problematic than video. So if your camera has the ability to record audio, it might be worth turning this feature off. If you travel abroad, do remember that other countries have different CCTV, privacy and data protection laws to the UK. For example, in Austria, even dash cams are totally illegal. And you could end up with a large fine just for having one. You can find more details on that in my video linked here and in the video notes. If you do choose to publish any of your videos on the internet, again, different countries have different requirements around protecting people's privacy. So check before you do. I hope that this video has been useful. I know that CCTV isn't a choice that everybody will make, but I hope the video shows what it can do for you. In our next video, I'll do a review of this RioLink totally wire-free CCTV camera, and why I think it's one of the most flexible and value for money options on the market. Thanks for watching our video and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share and consider subscribing.